please rise in body and spirit for our responsive call to worship this morning. <coughs> we gather to respond to the call of God's love. Thankful that, that someone cared enough to share this good news with us. May we be compassionate enough to share this divine presence with others. Love, Love when shared, shared is not divided, divided but multiplied. Love given away is not diminished but expanded. May, May our gathering welcome those near and far to know the love of God's divine presence. Please remain standing for our processional song. to welcome you. I know this is going to be a powerful service. Anytime I, again, our ushers are in the back fanning, I know it's going to be a hot service and I just look forward to it. So I'm just grateful. So thank you for that. I'm the Reverend Onetta Brooks and it is my honor to again welcome you on behalf of the entire congregation of Founders Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles on this third Sunday after Epiphany where the presence of spirit, the presence of Christ, appears and reappears in all of us throughout this time. I want to welcome our first-time visitors. Are there any newcomers or first-time visitors? Will you just raise your welcome? Thank you. We're so grateful that you've chosen to worship with us today. And again, after worship downstairs in our fellowship hall, we have coffee. We'd love to have an opportunity to, again, connect with you some more. So welcome. I also want to welcome our online visitors. What a joy it is to be rebroadcasting again and to feel your presence with us this morning and just holding space. So thank you and welcome. And of course, all of you regular attenders, you returning attenders, uh, it is just a joy to have you with worship today, especially on this day. Many of you know, um, have seen listed the Reverend Dr. Lori Dick um, on our website as clergy and you've seen 
where her name is often with prayer ministry as well as uh, facilitating classes along with others on creating a life that matters and uh, others. But today we have a special opportunity to hear her voice and her method about a stubborn hope. So I want to welcome you um, uh, as you share the message with us today. And again, I just want to welcome again all of you. And I realize that uh, this is season <coughs> and however you experience it as flu season or not, I don't buy into the thought, but I just want to invite you as you pair past the peace to extend a handshake, a hug, or however it's a look that is welcome. <laughs> Share the peace of Christ with someone today. Our first reading comes uh, from the book of Psalms, chapter 62, verses 5 through 12, from the Message Translation. God, the one and only, I'll wait for you as long as you say. Everything I hope comes from you, God, so why not? You are solid rock under my feet breathing room for my soul, an impregnable castle. I'm set for life. My help and glory are in God, granite strength and safe harbor God. So trust God, absolutely. People, lay your lives on the line for God. God is a safe place to be. Man as such is smoke. Woman, as such, a mirage. Put them together, they're nothing. Two times nothing is nothing. And a windfall, if it comes, don't make too much of it. God said this once and for all. How many times have I heard it, have I heard it repeated? Strength comes straight from God. Love to you, Lord God. You pay a fair wage for a good day's work. Please rise as you are able. remain standing for the second reading of the gospel according to Mark chapter 1 verses 14 through 20 in the message translation. 
After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time is up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Passing along the beach of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew net fishing. Fishing was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. I will make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They dropped their nets and followed. A dozen yards or so down the beach, he saw the brothers James and John, Zebedee's sons. They were in the boat, mending their fishing nets. Right off, he made the same offer immediately. They left their father Zebedee, the boat, and the hired hands and followed. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. our time of preparation for the word. So today I would like us particularly to pray for Troy and for his partner as they travel, for health and for God to keep them always on God's journey. And I'd like you to pray for Lisa as she has court date tomorrow and perhaps um, sentencing. So please pray for her. Jesus says, time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Just like the people in Galilee, we're hearing Jesus preach. God is getting our attention. Have you noticed things have been changing around here? And uh, hopefully we're all in prayer and we're praying for (coughs) whoever is called to lead us here as pastor and to lead this congregation forward. So it's time for each of us to do our part and all of us together to give God our full attention and our full selves in surrender. God is calling each and all of us to be all that God has prepared us to be. So the Bible in Psalm 62 tells us, God, the one and only, I'll wait as long as you say. Everything I hope for comes from you, God. You are a solid rock under my feet, breathing room for my soul, an impregnable castle I'm set for life. Here we are in our life, and we learn from Jesus about his life and ministry. We know Jesus surrendered himself willingly to God. There was a few tough spots and a couple of glitches, but hey, you know. He made it through. Um, When he was starting his work, he needed followers. He needed other people to learn and to teach the truth of God and to share the ways of God with the people who were in such need to know God's love. 
So he was walking the beach of Lake Galilee. Now, I don't know. I mean, they were neighbors, right? They had grown up together. Maybe it was a surprise. I don't know. But Jesus came up to these working men, these unsuspecting fishermen, and Jesus said to Simon and to Andrew, who were net fishing, come with me. I'll make you a new kind of fisherman. I'll show you how to catch men and women, not just, you know, perch and bass or whatever in that lake. They didn't ask questions. They just dropped their nets and followed. Well, so much for income, right? A dozen yards or so later, they came up to James and John, who were probably good friends and neighbors. They were in the boat. They were fixing the nets ostensibly to get back to working. He made them the same offer, and right off, they dropped their nets and left Zebedee and the boat and all the folks who were working, and they followed him. Jesus called Troy Perry to follow him. After being kicked out of the Pentecostal church, where he had been made a pastor at a young age because he was gay, Troy lost everything, his home, his family, his work, his community. In the midst of his loss and depression, Troy was called to visit a gay man in prison who was suicidal. The young man said to Troy, if God hates me so much because I'm gay, I have no hope. Troy himself had been suicidal. He knew this man needed God's truth to hold on to. He said, God loves you, a God made you just the way you are. You are God's beloved, and God will never leave you. This was the good news Troy had been searching for. He finally heard it in his own words as it came through him to help save this young man. And on this good news, Metropolitan Community Church was founded through Troy Perry. This founding church has more work to do. We know that there's struggling in the denomination. We know that there's change everywhere. And I believe as we work through our own grist and work through our own changes, it will make a difference. So here we are, being called, being confident, and it's that stubborn hope in our hearts. Albert Camus says, there is so much stubborn hope in the human heart. I think we're full up on that. I think we got a lot of stubborn hope going on. Um, we're not giving up. We're not turning over. We're just moving forward, waiting, hoping, treasuring what we have and each other, and looking for opportunities to serve. We're waiting on God's word. We're waiting for direction. And we're never giving up. So here we are. In the movement that spread around the world called MCC, we were brought together as LGBT folks to stand with and serve those in terrible need. It was the time of the AIDS crisis. That's when Steve and I began our work together, helping people as spiritual warfares when there wasn't any medication and there was nothing else to do. But new treatments were demanded and finally made available. Hospices were opened and full. And spiritual care, emotional care, physical care, legal care were provided to many who were in terrible need. God brought us together as thousands of young gay men were suffering and dying. God brought hope and healing. And now, with a lot of hard work and medication in this country, in Africa, around the world, it's possible to prevent AIDS. It's possible to care for people with HIV, such that it's a long-term illness. And that's a miracle. What a change. God isn't finished with us yet. There are big problems on the horizon and present for us to pay attention. 
sexual trafficking has become the number one criminal activity in the country and perhaps in the world. It's the biggest exploitation of our young and beautiful people in this country, and you know it's a chain from country to country. All of that promotes drug addiction. It promotes poverty, rape, violence in our homes, our streets, and it makes people vulnerable, homeless, and suicidal. The big challenge of this 21st century is going to be the divisive force between which religion is top dog and which nation has to be in charge of the world. So as our country is diminishing in that role of being police keeper of the world, there's a lot of change and discomfort and not knowing what is our role. It's time. This is our next stop. And if the gospel can't get itself unstuck out of that conflict of religions, then it doesn't have the living power to overcome even its own divisive, imperial, and triumphal stuff. The I need to be top dog, I need to be in charge stuff. No, God is in charge. And it's our job to get the gospel unstuck from religion and back into the power and presence of God in each human, in each community of the world. It's our calling to preach and teach the gospel. The way of Jesus is God present in the world through Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, which means God with us. God's way transcends the world. And through Jesus and all his humanity, God is fully present, as is God through our full humanity. Jesus taught the gospel of love, God's love made manifest on the earth. Jesus taught us to serve people, Matthew 25, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, helping the homeless, visiting the sick, and those in prison. When we request and are willing and ask God to enter in, to live in us, to live through us, we are like a small presence of heaven walking through the world, making a difference of allowing that full presence of God, the love, the healing, the presence, the uplifting, the miracle, to make change in people's lives. Amen. So that's our calling. It's on us to be willing, to ask, and to receive all of who God is into our human bodily selves, and allow that little bit of heaven to transcend whatever is happening around us, to not believe the limitations, whatever is presenting any one individual or group, but just let that presence of God make the difference that it's called to make. So being heaven on earth is part of what we're called to do. We are reaching out to the hungry, the thirsty, the wounded, the needy, the homeless, sick, and imprisoned. We can always do more. God is made manifest to our brothers and sisters through our presence, whether it's at the food bank, laundry love, Bible study, worship, hospital visitation, hospice, or prison visitation. I learned a lot this year visiting Lisa in prison. I was impressed by the tremendous need for prison ministry. So many women caught up in terrible circumstances that that need for the presence of God to heal. Amen. Women are all, of all walks of life need the good news in order to find out that they could reach out for a new life and be willing to receive that hope and healing that they need. 
through Jesus Christ, they need their lives to be touched and open a new window for a new life of wholeness and health. We can bring God's presence to the incarcerated. I feel that we are called to bring our ministry to the women's prison, to meet them. There's so many of us there. They deserve our help and they need a personal entree to God. God can do so much through us, living the gospel, feeding those in need with love and hope. We are those people who are prepared to bring light and love, the light and love of Jesus into the world. So I'd like you to take a moment just to pray within yourself. God, this is our time. Prepare us, help us to be willing. Give us a word, a touch. What are you calling us to? What is our direction? What is the gift that you've asked us to exercise in your name? Speak to us now. Lift up our hearts and give us the tools and the presence of heart and mind to do all that you ask us to. Thank you, God, for your direction, for your peace, and giving us all that we need to answer your prayer through us. And God, as we pray every day, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Prepare us, fill us, use us, send us out to touch those lives who are calling out for you. Time's up. God's kingdom is here, and now, MCC, we are called to renew our commitment to God, to teach God's truth, and serve God's people wherever they may be. We must listen with all our hearts and minds and give all our heart and mind and soul and strength to be filled with God's presence. Just like us, people who are vulnerable are losing their hope. I believe Jesus is calling us to be his followers, to catch men and women out of the hands of hopelessness into the arms of God. Each of us has a special calling. Give ourselves into God's care and let that calling come to fruition. Live life by asking and receiving, practicing God's guidance every day. Jesus will walk with us every step of the way. We are God's church, called to live and share the healing, the hope-filled truth of God. God loves you, and God created you and I with a stubborn heart and with stubborn hope. You are God's beloved, just the way you are. You are God's alone, and God will never leave you. God is your hope and your solid rock. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen.
seated. Today, the, I have the privilege to share some announcements on behalf of Dean. Um, and what a joy it is to thank you for the message of a, a stubborn hope. And I think as each of us reflect on service and how we are called to be in God's ministry, um, this is a perfect time to do it. I just want to draw your attention to a few things. I want to uh, draw your attention in our bulletin. There are just many opportunities and many meetings, and I just want you to take the time afterwards to see uh, where you feel called or what ministry that you may choose to begin to participate in and contact those persons and become a part. I don't know if you've been to the Ryland room behind me. Uh, there was some clutter behind the closet door and it is clear. And so I just want to thank those persons of the property and building management yesterday who just put things up and it's such a clean space. I didn't know what I was looking at. Just what happened? I thought there was a, you know. And so I just, again, there are so many persons in front and behind the scene who just make ministry happen in this congregation. And I just want to thank, uh, thank everyone who serves, realizing that no matter if I or others recognize you, the fact that God, God knows you and knows what you're doing. I want to just draw out a one bullet announcement that was left out of the bulletin and then we'll have our offering. Uh, the Sanctuary Task Force is seeking new members. Um, as our neighborhood faces the renewed threat of immigration enforcement in the wake of California's having become a sanctuary state on January 1st, um, the Founders Sanctuary Task Force seeks new members. So the next meeting is Thursday, February 1st at 6 p.m. Uh, for information, please contact Troy Elder and there's an email address. So again, if you feel called in that area to serve, please know there's our ushers have again already passed out the attendance tab and I, tablets and I thank you for registering your attendance. And so now in that spirit, we invite you to share a portion of what God has given you of your treasure for the ongoing ministry of this church. Thank you. Today we offer our prayers as a community, a community called to pray together. I invite you to join with me in saying, God, hear our prayer after each prayer. Our gracious and eternal God, we thank that Jesus called to his disciples, came in such an eventful way, contrary to the wisdom of the world. He did not start with the privileged and the wealthy and the powerful of his time. He did not begin with those who had little need and little desire for change. For he began with some very simple folk. Jesus began with that journey with fishermen. For we pray that his call, come, follow me, might again reverberate through our souls today. Hear us, O oh God. God, hear our prayer. May we again hear the challenge to be your disciples. 
May we hear again the message of this one who brings good news. May we hear again the invitation to come to you, all who are weary and heavy laden. May we hear again the eternal words of hope, which tell us that however dark the world has become, that darkness can never overcome the radiant light of this Holy One, Jesus. May we hear again those simple words of, come, follow me, and may we come just as we are and know again the depth of your grace and love for us. Hear us, O God. God, God, hear our prayer. Give us this power to bring change and transformation to the peoples of the world as did those early fishermen. Give us the power to provide the same kind of hope for the world weary as they brought to theirs. Give us the vision of a world transformed. Hear us, O God. God, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose health is in constant and major concern. We especially with those whose health is compromised for so much that they have no hope of ever feeling totally well again. For those we ask that you give courage for the frustrating obstacles of life. Hear us, O oh God. God. God, hear our prayer. Please take this moment of silence to share with us what's on your heart with God, either with a name or with a word. Hear us, O oh God. God, God, hear our prayer. For these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, we pray to God as we sing together a prayer in the spirit of how Jesus taught us to pray. God dwells in you. And also in you. Come to the table with thankful hearts. We open our hearts to God and to one another. Yes, friends, freedom is a powerful experience of love. Let us open our hearts to God and one another, for that is what Christ did and does for us at this table. Let us open our hearts, hearts that are filled with our dream, of your dominion here on earth 
as we join with all those who came before us and all who will come after us in a song in an ending praise. Remember that Jesus Christ, who invites all who are thirsty to come and to be fed, who earnestly prayed for us in the face of crucifixion, and calls to us to break bread together, to love one another, and include all who desire to share in this great table of fellowship. We remember on that night you took bread, blessed it, and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Mm. Likewise, he took a cup, a fruit of the vine, and he said, this is my love to be poured out for you all. My life essence, my blood, to be poured for your forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Pray with me. Spirit of the living God, let us remember this community that is being formed around your table today. Transform us as we transform the grains hmm, of the field and the fruit of the vine to nourish a world hungry for hope and thirsty for justice. Let us take this act of communion into the world with us as we spread your message of spirit, hope, freedom, and presence. May it strengthen our faith, increase our generosity to neighbors, and unite us with others around the world. It simply is not all about us. Mm. We pray in your many names. Amen. What's great about MCC, not only here at Founders, but MCCs around the world, that as we prepare this feast of love, I would like to now invite the servers and acolytes to come forward. As founders, and as I mentioned, MCCs around the world, that this is an open table. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church, for the feast is open for all those who desire. We have gluten-free wafers. All you need to do is just let us know. The server will provide that gluten-free wafer for you. For the table has been prepared with mercy and freedom. And wherever you are on your spiritual journey, come as the ushers guide you. The feast is ready. God invites us to this table to share. Come.
God has given us this opportunity to open our hearts and our minds. Take this opportunity. God is ready and willing, and so are we. So God, bring it on. Allow this to be that the church you are calling us to be renewed in this new day. We give you all thanks and praise. Amen. 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 Please rise for our closing song. Thank <laughs> you.